we're going to talk again about elements and compounds. These are the two categories of pure substances. So in elements, we have atomic elements and molecular elements. In compounds, we've got ionic and molecular. Um, we already talked a little bit about the covalent bonds that are found in molecular elements and the ionic bonds that are found in ionic compounds. Let's talk about those elements first. Most elements exist with atoms as their smallest unit, like metals especially, um, and, and even things like carbon, um, the noble gases. If you look at the smallest units, they are atoms. But there are some that exist as, as molecules. Um, the ones we need to know about are the seven diatomic elements. So these seven elements, when they are present as an element, not part of a compound, but as an element, they are going to be diatomic, meaning they have two atoms bonded together in a molecule. And when we talk more about bonding, we'll understand why they do that. Energetically, it's more stable for them. But chlorine gas, um, if you look at the individual particles, they are not individual atoms. They are molecules composed of two chlorine atoms bonded together. Um, phosphorus and sulfur are also um, existing as molecules. They're polyatomic. Um, I'd like you to know that they do that, but I'm not going to require you to remember that it's P4 and S8. Okay, so here's the periodic table. You need to know those seven. It is important. So there's three, I'm going to give you three different ways to remember them. So if we start with the number seven on the periodic table and make a seven, that's, that's six of those guys. And then there's hydrogen. The baby brother of the element family has to be an exception to everything, right? He can't, it would be too convenient for him to be over here with the rest of them. He's off by himself. So it's the seven starting with seven and then hydrogen. Um, these guys kind of uh, in this little corner, um, phosphorus, sulfur, and actually selenium as well, those form polyatomic ions, or polyatomic molecules. How many does selenium have? I don't know off the top of my head. And I have a hard time remembering phosphorus and sulfur because I don't use it very much. And so that's why I don't think you should have to remember it. So two other ways to remember these guys. Um, one is a silly sentence and one is a made up word. Um, horses. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. That's um, what we call a, a mnemonic where the first letter of each word represents something. Clear brown eyes. It's great until you get to the eyes part. Um, it's eyes clear brown eyes, the letter I. <coughs> yeah, there's a, like a delay there. I wrote it. See, wrote it on here. Now we're waiting for it to appear on the screen above this Wi-Fi. I used a different mnemonic, actually, but I thought it should be pretty effective. What did you use? Uh, have no fear of ice cold beer. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Have no fear of ice cold beer. They want me to use a technology in the classroom, but they cannot give me internet that will not impede my ability to use technology in the classroom. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Brinkelhoff. What was the beer one again? Have no fear of ice cold beer. Have no fear. Oops. Of ice cold beer. That's probably catchier, especially for college students. 
Um, what I do like about the clear brown part is it's got the CL and the BR, so that's nice. However you remember it, remember it. We were talking about elements, that's what we were doing. Molecular compounds. So molecular compounds are two or more covalently bonded non-metal elements. Um, we have individual molecules in these molecular compounds. That's why they're called molecular compounds, because they have molecules. <coughs> so water is a molecular compound. The individual molecules are H2O, dry ice, um, propane. So propane is C3H8. So here we have an illustration of your propane cylinder for your grill, complete with all the you know, corrosion that happens. Um, these are the individual propane molecules. This molecular compound. Ionic compounds are composed of cations and anions that are bonded together by the electrostatic charge of force of attraction we call ionic bonds. So normally, or most frequently, this is a metal cation and non-metal anions. And we have an alternating pattern of cations and anions. There is not a discrete molecule. And so ionic compounds do not contain molecules. The smallest unit is what's called a formula unit, the smallest electrically neutral collection of ions. Basically, the formula unit is going to be an empirical formula for most of them. So sodium chloride, you know, if you described how many sodium ions and chloride ions were in this unit here, this piece, it would be a lot. But the smallest ratio is one sodium and one chlorine, so sodium chloride. Then we have polyatomic ions. Um, Polyatomic ions are groups of element or groups of atoms that are covalently bonded together, but then overall the group has some extra electrons, so it has a negative charge. So we've got things like nitrate ion, NO3 minus. These oxygens are covalently bonded to the nitrogen. Overall, there's one extra electron. There's carbonate and hypochlorite. We'll talk a little more about these later. So we need to be able to classify substances. We're going to get into naming and writing formulas for compounds. We can't do that if we can't identify what category a substance is, because the rules are different for molecular and ionic compounds. So let's practice. We're looking for atomic element, molecular element, molecular compound, or ionic compound. So fluorine, first of all, element or compound? It's an element. Is it molecular or atomic? Is it one of the seven? Yes. So it's one of the seven, so that tells me it's a molecular element. It exists as F2 molecules. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes, have no fear of ice cold beer, Brinkelhoff, whatever. N2O, element or compound? <coughs> compound. You should be able to tell that because there's two capital letters there. Um, ionic or molecular? Molecular. Look at the first element. Is it a metal? Nope. Is the second element a metal? Nope. So this is molecular compound. How about silver? That's an element. Is it atomic or molecular? It's atomic. It's not one of the seven. Silver exists as individual silver atoms. K2O is a compound. First element, is that a metal or a nonmetal? It's a metal. K, you maybe have rem uh, memorized that K is potassium. Potassium may not scream metal in your brain. That's why we have the periodic table. Find it in the periodic table. It's to the left of the line. It's a metal. If the first element is a metal in Chem 1A, it is an ionic compound. So this is ionic. Fe2O3, what's that? <coughs> it's 
somebody be bold and say it out loud. Thank you, ionic compound. The first element, Fe, is a metal. Iron is a metal. We got a metal and a nonmetal. That's an ionic compound. Any questions? Very important. Not a difficult skill, but important, really important. 